Hi, this is Bill here at PowerStrokeHelp.com. Today we're going to talk about catastrophic engine failure in a 6.7. This 2011 F250 that's got a hole in the side of the motor. I'm going to lead you through a little bit of the process about why this truck came in here on a wrecker needing an engine way before its time. This is a 120,000, 25,000 mile truck and this is way too early for this truck to be needing a motor. But there's a very specific reason why and if you pay attention to the end of the video, I'm going to tell you how to solve this problem for minimal expense. We've actually had to put several motors in 6.7 so far because we do build a better motor than Ford. And every one of these motors is a tuned motor. Okay, I beat on H&S tuning because it's not made for the street. I've never seen a Spartan 6.7, uh, uh, but I'm sure I am before it's all over. But it, it, this tuning absolutely kills 6.4s and 6.7s. And it's because of the timing. So we're going to lead you through a little odyssey here of uh, what goes on with these 6.7s and why Ford Motor Company will not warranty a truck that's been DPF deleted. There's a reason why. It's because there's too much timing in the tune. So follow along here and we'll show you what we're going to do. Y'all ready to go up with it? might be a problem. Is it one of these ones with an oil leak? <laughs> it lost its coolant. Well, we got to get the starter out of here and you can see the hole better. Oops. I wish that hadn't happened. All it cost is money. You got to go fast. It costs money. Thank you. And one of the first things you, you notice when you pull the cab up on a 6.7 is the size of the transmission. They made this a lot bigger to handle all that 850 foot-pounds of torque that this motor makes. After we get the starter out of there, you can see where the oil leak is coming from. I bet you a connecting rod came apart inside there. But look at the kibbles and chunks. Kibbles and bits. That must be why she's not uh, running very well. Actually, this thing didn't even turn over, did it, Mikey? No, nah, it's locked. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing you notice about a 6.7 truck when you look at them, the cab up, there's two completely different cooling systems on this truck. Two completely different radiators. I mean, air to liquid. And the two radiators manage a cooler for transmission fluid, but for fuel too, Mikey, right? Mm -hmm. Manages the fuel. What else does this uh, heat management system deal with? The aggressive, the EGR cooler. Uh-huh, EGR cooler. And so you don't have to really need to delete the EGR because it's not going to break open and send coolant down on the motor like a 6.4 and bend number 8 connecting rod, which, let me see, how many of those have we seen? Oh yeah, the other thing it manages is this coolant system manages your charge air cooler. So all those, you know, um, hoses that you used to have on there for the big inner cooler that sat out front, it's been replaced by a liquid system that is cooled by this radiator. So you eliminate a bunch of that stuff that's sitting out front, the transmission cooler, the the uh, intercooler, the power steering cooler, all that stuff is uh, no longer here, which is kind of fun. So all you have are these two, these two coolers and an AC condenser. So here you see the short block going together, oil pan going on it and everything. 
Got to put the uh, big dog heads on there, O-rings, new valves, you know, same deal like all the other heads we build. And uh, this is going to be a good motor for this guy. I think we're still waiting on the studs. Yeah, this guy beat on this thing pretty hard. Um, you know, when your transmission fluid looks like that, uh, I'm wondering if transmission is going to stick to a new motor. It's like, what the hell do these people do these things? Uh, lifters came apart. It appears as though the camshaft has broken inside this motor on but until we get it on the floor and actually see what's broken and we really won't know the initial inspection shows some pretty uh, foobard parts here and I don't think it's any fault of the part I think that the camshaft broke and that pieces got mangled up inside there so none of this stuff is reusable and I hope this transmission will survive a fresh motor well, looking down in this motor here with the oil pan off, it's obvious that the piston got ripped apart here. And then it damaged the camshaft. It actually pushed the camshaft forward in the motor. You can see the cams push forward on the gears here. It's, it's uh, slid forward a little bit. And I think that's what killed the lifters. But I think the initial failure was this uh, piston breaking here and then the carnage of the connecting rod breaking off into pieces and this is what we found you know we found the wrist pin and all sorts of other nice little bits and pieces in the oil pan here yeah it's not a happy thing yeah how about that connecting rod this is what happens when your guy that sells you the tuner says, oh yeah, put it on race tune. You can pull your trailer with that. 30,000 pound trailer over Mon Eagle. This is the type of breakage that happens. So we got the cab down on it. She secured pretty well. And Amar, it's a matter of just doing the top stuff. I'd like to have gotten a picture of it for you with, you know, just the motor sitting in the frame, all big and pretty, but this is where we're at. So tomorrow, she will go vroom vroom. All right, so here's the disassembled block now. It's obvious that the number eight connecting rod got snapped uh, and went through there and managed to just tear everything up as far as the block goes. The block, it managed to destroy the block on um, both sides as it went round and round and it's uh, a destructive fury there. Uh, the camshaft got pushed forward. Uh, you can see it clearly. Uh, the camshaft got pushed forward. And that's probably what killed the lifters. And you can see it's the destruction's pretty complete here. The block, crank, uh, rods. So this is what, this is the number eight piston. This is the number seven piston. Obviously the connecting rod got snapped, but I think that came after the fact. I think the bottom of the piston failed here. Uh, and then that got the wrist pin loose and, and started flinging everything around in there. And you know, everything got destroyed. Uh, and little kibbles and bits in the oil pan. You know, nice little nuggets here that got flung all through here. The piston. You know got shredded you know it creates a real mess uh in this uh, in this motor but you know it was the engine was stressed beyond what it was designed to do by running this tuning this is what you end up with so this is how you create scrap iron out of a perfectly good motor i've spent a good bit of my life looking at this kind of thing um from race cars to street cars to trucks to tractors to just about everything everybody wants to go fast on but if you're gonna go fast it's gonna cost money Ford doesn't give these parts away for free now really understand the, the effects of tuning on an engine you gotta understand you know what the connecting rod really does now this did not come out of this engine this came out of another tuned engine uh, that came in with this little odd skip okay the connecting rod goes is, is, is going up and down okay and it, and it turns the crankshaft and it's running the piston up and down. So you're taking a harmonic motion of the piston and you're turning it into a rotational motion, which you know becomes the crankshaft that's attached to the transmission, goes to the drive shaft, and eventually the rear wheels. The problem is, is that when you tune this engine, you're creating a huge amount of pressure down on the connecting rod when, you, when it goes into the compression stroke. And this, this, this force is huge, but this is how it makes power is by compressing that explosion. Now, by injecting the fuel early, you create a huge amount of pressure. And that's what bent this connecting rod. We thought it was a hydrolock, but we could find no evidence of anything that would have hydrolocked this engine. It had to be pressure from combustion. 
We ended up replacing all eight rods because I felt like the other seven were weak from this same problem in this motor. And this man's been driving it for quite a while now. And then once it comes down from the top, it pulls. So the combination of the pressure of pushing and then at higher RPM, the yanking and pull. And pistons in diesel engines are very heavy because of this big wrist pin and whatnot. So this, this tends to compress the rod and stretch the rod at the same time and will shear this spot right here, which is exactly what happened on this connecting rod. See, that's that part right there. It's all deformed from going through the, the catastrophic failure. Now, the question is, is did the rod fail first or did the piston fail first? Okay, because there's not a lot of meat on the bottom of these pistons. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot of material here to stop this tearing pattern when you get RPM and the, and the crankshaft comes around and yanks this piston down real hard. This area in here is kind of skimpy. So it, it may have ripped here first and then taken the connecting rod. I don't know. I just know what's left after something like this. But this one coming from a previous motor with that funny bend in it, um, it would make me think that these rods are maybe not quite up to the type of severe duty uh, that, that people are putting to them with all this tuning. It doesn't matter what year model truck you have, uh, 7360, 6467, it, 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 what year model does, tuning will shorten the life of an engine and void the warranty with Ford and void my warranty on uh, the work that I did. Yes. All right, so we take the truck for a test drive. Um, I don't change any of the tuning because we want to make sure it runs because it was running when the motor, you know, died. <laughs> it's obvious that the tune that's in this thing is, you know, some industrial diesel psycho tune, okay? The thing has an absolutely sick amount of power. And I, and I asked him, I said, you know, when you got this tuning for this truck, What'd they tell you? He said, oh, just put it in the race tune. Then you can tow it with the trailer and whatnot. Okay. No, you can't. And that's what killed this truck. Is it, is it, you're, we're running some crazy tuning in here that is uh, got a lot of, a lot of timing in it and a lot of fuel. And you're simply going to find the weak point in the engine. Uh, and and that's, that's just the bottom line. There, there's three things that kill motors. Number one is poor maintenance. You just don't take care of it. Uh, number two uh, is abuse. Um, the technical term is the loose nut behind the wheel. The third one is tuning. The tuning strategies that they have out there for six fours and six sevens are, are it's amazing the horsepower. It's amazing the torque that these engines make. They're capable of just astonishing amounts of power, but it takes its toll on the engine parts. You are going to pay to play. I mean, this has been going on since, you know, People have been racing horses. If you push a horse too hard, you're gonna you're gonna wear out his his knees and his and his legs and whatnot. This guy found the weak point in this engine, which was the wrist pin. Now, here's the kicker. This is why you've watched the whole video, and I'm gonna tell you something. There's only one way to really deal with a 6.7. You need to go to DP Tuner, dp-tuner.com, and get a hold of Jody Tipton. Jody Tipton will set you up with tuning that will work with the DPF and all the SCR and all that stuff in place and it will not, read my lips, will not void your warranty. The tuning that's on this truck with this pipe in here and the DPF delete, which is the way it came to me, is illegal. It's against the law. You're not supposed to be running this. I can put my own tuning in it, but it's not gonna go nearly as fast as this thing. And I mean, this thing will, this thing will run. I mean, it's, 60 miles an hour and I'm spinning tires on the freeway. It's, frankly, I don't think this type of tuning is necessary, but these people want to go fast and they, they don't understand that to, to make an 8,500 pound truck go into the 11s on a quarter mile, something's going to break. Something's going to break. They just can't get around it. So the secret of this video is, the real secret, and the kicker is, is keep all that stuff on a 6.7, keep all the stuff on there. Go to Jody Tipton at DP Tuner and have him do the missions legal tuning. Uh, you'll be far happier with it and you won't kill the resale value of your truck. First thing you do, you take a truck like this in there to trade it in and they look underneath it and because uh, 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 a dealer can't sell this off of his lot. 
he's going to send it to the auction and it's going to become, you know, it, it devalues the truck by 25 or 30 percent uh, at trade-in time. If you get stopped by the public safety guys in the state of Georgia, um, they, can, they can impound your truck and then I believe that what they do is they force you to put $5,000 into an escrow account that, that is accessed by a Ford dealer to bring the truck back up to mission spec again. That's the kind of stuff they're doing out there. So, I don't recommend that you do a DPF delete on any of the 6-7 trucks. If you're going to go fast in one of these trucks, expect to spend a lot of money, like this guy. You're going to grenade the motor with off-road tuning. You're running a tremendous risk legally. If you get stopped, they will impound your truck. I do not recommend doing DPF delete or SCR delete on any of these trucks. Also, if you're watching my videos and you're not watching them on PowerStrokeHelp.com, you're really missing where the action is. You need to go to the website PowerStrokeHelp.com and check us out because there's a lot of information on there that could be very useful to you as a PowerStroke owner to keep your truck on the road as long as possible. Remember, if you press the Arch Oil button, all the proceeds from Arch Oil uh, go to help train a vet, the nonprofit organization that I run, to help veterans ease their way back into civilian life. Thank you for all your support for making PowerStrokeHelp.com the number one stop for power stroke owners on the internet.